That's our new leaders right there. Big Silly! University of Montevallo, 2496. <laughs> National champions, Wallace State, Briar and Clinton. Hey there, guys. Welcome into the latest episode of the Rapala We Are Collegiate Bass Podcast. Today's episode, tragic situation that occurred here just a few weeks ago, a high school angler in Indiana who signed to participate on the Wabash Valley College bass fishing team next fall. So he's set to be a senior this upcoming year. Eli Newberry passed away in a car accident. Very unfortunate situation, a life taken way too soon. On today's show, we're going to have coach from Wabash Valley College, Todd Gill, anglers Hunter Capehart, Mason Gross, and Carter Smith talking about Eli as they knew him. Um, what they had we're looking forward to of him being a teammate there at Wabash Valley College the memorial tournament that was held on August 13th at Patoka Lake of which we'll get into Hunter was a co-organizer of that and just the overwhelming support that's come from the college fishing community and the fishing industry as a whole coach anyone that might not have known Eli I want you to take a moment to talk about your interactions with him whether it be on the recruiting trail and the short time that you knew him what did you learn about him what were some interesting things, things you like that stuck out about Eli? Well, it, uh, my first meeting with Eli was kind of a, an odd, odd or funny one uh, in that um, we had just gotten approval for our team uh, to, to get started at Wabash Valley College, and I was at one of my daughter's softball tournaments, and two young men come walking through the, uh, the softball area there with, uh, with fishing jerseys on, and so... Um, Kyle knowing me, I, I'm pretty outgoing, so I just said, hey, guys, you guys fish high school? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, where are you from? And he's like, from Washington, Indiana. And I said, well, we're just getting a new team started at Wabash Valley College, so as you get close to the end of your high school years, might, you might want to give us a look. And uh, some several months went by, but then I, I got a contact from Eli. Uh, hey, Coach, you know, I, you, you remember meeting me at this softball tournament i um, been fishing tournaments, and he just um, he just started, you know, frequently sending results from tournaments. And you know, obviously, one of the big things, Kyle, you know, with the uh, the difficulty of the travel and everything, you look for kids that are passionate about fishing. And uh, you know, I could definitely tell that Eli was uh, passionate about about tournament fishing, and uh, just seemed like a great kid, respectable kid. Uh, reached out to me again through the winter and spring. Uh, we held we held a, a an, an open tournament uh, down at Lake of Egypt this spring, and Eli said, "Hey, coach, I'm I'm ready to sign if you're willing to take me." And uh, Hunter K. Parts from Indiana knew of Eli uh, from fishing against him. I I wasn't quite ready to sign Eli to be honest with you, being that he was just a junior, um, and I guess at that time this past year would have been finishing up his junior year and I, I was kind of a little bit hesitant but Hunter assured me he's like man this kid knows how to fish and loves to fish and so we went ahead and signed Eli at our um, our open event that we had at Lake of Egypt this spring and, and since then I think I don't remember uh, it was just maybe a couple weeks prior to his accident he had sent me a picture he was excited he'd won a tournament on West Fog Lake so um, so we were at super. He was our my first junior that I had signed for next year, uh, and we were super excited to have him uh, be a part of, part of our team. It was uh, kind of gut wrenching. I woke up I think maybe on a Monday morning and saw a post from Joe Moon. Joe Moon was another one. Uh, was really one that initiated the um, the memorial tournament, and then I, I told him to get a hold of Hunter, and those two kind of partnered up and really kind of drove the the bus on the memorial tournament but i'd seen that joe moon posted that that the fishing community had lost a young one that was very passionate about fishing and within an hour or two i'd gotten a call from uh from both hunter and uh, evan evan waters is another angler of ours from indiana and so the fishing community as you know kyle is a family um these college kids as they travel you know i know i can speak for my son and and for uh, all the anglers, to me, part of the love of doing this is just the relationships and friendships you make along the way. So, so you get to, it seems like you get to know people or that common bond of fishing really creates the friendship very quickly. And, and um, we're definitely saddened significantly by the passing of Eli. 
talking about the relationships and the friendships and the bonds that build throughout fishing. And that happens inside your family, inside your teams in college, and then out on the professional circuit, those guys, you hear them talk about it as well. It's, it's a big family out there and you get to know people and these relationships mean something. Mason, you had the opportunity to form a relationship with Eli as coach has told me as preparation for the interview, you, you all went through the transaction of, so you sold a boat to Eli. And so in that process, I'm sure you got to spend some time with them out on the water, time on the phone, communicating and things like that what you know tell the listeners a little bit more the coach did a good good job of talking about who Eli was Mason talk a little bit about your interactions with him and maybe some something you learned about him that you're that's going to stick with you for a while yeah so last February I uh, decided to upgrade boats uh, to fish my sophomore season and uh, Eli reached out to me about buying my boat it's the it's the boat i used to fish my first year of college and and he was fishing out of a uh, some sort of aluminum boat i believe and he was looking to get into a glass boat and he uh he came over on a saturday about and about 9 a.m to my house to look at the boat and uh, usually those types of things take an hour and a half two hours of talking looking it over and deciding and i think uh, all said and done we were in my shop for about seven hours talking about fishing and and waterfowl and just anything and everything we had in common and uh, we became pretty fast friends after that he had questions about the boat questions about this and that uh, just getting used to it and uh, there for a while we were talking just about every day and uh, it wasn't it felt like you know you snap your fingers and we were just getting to become close friends and and we got that dreaded call that one morning and just words can't explain how awful of a thing it is but as todd said that the fishing family is a it, it's just one giant community and we all want to help each other and and uh, words can't speak to uh to how great that memorial tournament was uh just seeing all of eli's friends there and getting to talk to them and and all the kids from his community uh he's very 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 highly admired in the in his area as even as a as a senior in high school he's he was well known one of the co-organizers of the memorial tournament that took place there on august 13th at patoka lake is hunter capehart someone who coach mentioned is providing a bit of a reference and in regards to eli and giving a good word saying that that's somebody that wabash was going to want to be a part of their team hunter will pull you in here now talk a little bit about you know it it's pretty obvious why you would want to do this, you know, to, to memorialize a friend, to benefit his family, which this event did. But talk a little bit about how this all came to be in the weeks and days following his passing, the, the preparation, the meaning behind it, and the significance of what y'all did in putting this tournament together. Yeah, uh, I actually got a call from someone telling me that uh, he passed away, and it kind of took me by surprise because – I was just with him a few days before because we went up to Patoka for a uh, meeting because he had another tournament up there, and I went with him. And from there, I was like, I kind of, I wanted to do something, but I didn't really know what to do and just to help his family with it because I know it's such a tough thing to go through. And I got a hold of me and said there's a guy that's wanting to host a memorial tournament for him, and I, he told him that I, that I knew Eli really well. So I got a hold of Joe Moon, which – uh, ended up becoming very good friends with him, and we got to talking. And all of a sudden, this tournament started just rolling real quick. And we got, we started getting all of it planned out, uh, trying to bounce between lakes, what boat, what lakes had like boat limits and stuff like that, how many we could throw in there, because we had so much interest just from the very beginning, just people from his community, my community, and just anywhere really, and. So we started getting things rolling, and I mean, after that, it just kind of exploded. It came up from donations start rolling into, hey, I want to I wanna register, I want to do this, I want to do that. And it really, really took off from the beginning. And honestly, I, I, know, me, I know me and Joe were losing sleep at night just trying to make sure everything was good and set to go. And I could, really couldn't have asked for a better turnout just between everyone that showed up, whether they fished or not, just buying raffle tickets or fishing the tournament itself. or And another thanks I have is the guys that ran my high school uh, tournament trail for me when I fished in high school. They came and helped us out plenty. So Brian Ketchison, I want to say a big thanks to him as well if he's going to listen to this. And 
just a big thanks to a lot of people that helped run it because I know it wasn't just me and Joe, but like Todd said, we kind of put the wheels in motion and got it going, and it's just something I was really glad to be a part of. And for those who participated, you know, you guys had a lot of sweat and energy put into it to set it up, and those participating, they showed up um, in good in good faith as well. You're there to help mem- for this angler, you know, memorialize him, but also to be able to contribute and provide and know that you're helping make a difference on into the future and uh, assisting his family as this tournament did. We'll talk a little bit more later um, about what the plan is for this event going forward and a scholarship fund of which this event will benefit starting next year and on into the future. Carter, for you, talk a little bit about being a part of the event. You were able to participate, be out there um, on August 13th at Patoka Lake to, to participate in the Eli Newberry Memorial Tournament. Talk about that experience, what it meant for you to be able to be involved there on that day. It was really awesome being a part of that. You know, I'd met Eli a couple of years back at the uh, FLW Costa camp. We were all just high schoolers then, but I'd kept in touch with him over the years. And then he reached out to me after he saw that I signed with Wabash. And uh, he had a bunch of questions and we, you know, we stayed in touch. And uh, I ended up seeing him at Gunnersville in March. Uh, it was sometime in March, but we had a tournament on Gunnersville then. And I saw him there and talked to him a little bit. But, uh, yeah, the tournament was it, it was awesome, really, getting a new experience on a new lake and just being able to memorialize Eli. So it was great. Coach, we'll bring you in here now to talk. You know, we had Hunter's side of things as he was setting up the event yourself, very present on social media, um, getting the word out about this and, and on behalf of the team and, and the family and getting the support from the community, individuals, you name it, we're following it. We had the opportunity as well to contribute, and as we were happy to do so, to send some product in and, and help boost the prizes and things for the event. Talk about the response that you witnessed, um, overwhelming, I'm sure, that came from that, whether it be people that had connections back to the area, um, people who you not have not even talked to before, or even members of the industry that were reaching out to help. Just kind of speak to to the magnitude of what you experienced the last few weeks in preparation for gathering prizes for the event. Yeah, um, it you know, in in just our two years of fishing on the collegiate series, I've been very fortunate to to forge some relationships, you know, uh, professional bass fishing that to me is, is unlike, uh, any other sport, uh, as far as having accessibility to the professional athletes, the professional anglers. And so, um, so I've gotten to know, you know, to some degree, several of the professional anglers that are out on the circuit. And, uh, you know what I, I reached out and we've helped a couple of times with the uh, Wheeler fishing foundation had a college event last year and, hosted a high school event this summer that we went and and uh, were there representative of our college and so uh, I reached out I thought about Jacob Wheeler right off the bat because I know he he mentioned in his talk to the high school kids that he come from very humble beginnings in Indiana I think in a, a town uh, just a few miles from Indianapolis and and so I just in my mind I was thinking you know Wheeler probably grew up fishing bogs and some of the same lakes that that Eli did, and they were actually the first ones when I sent out some social media uh, private messages. I had an immediate response uh, from from Wheeler, and he sent us a couple of hats that were autographed. Um, you know, John Cruz with Missile Baits was another one. A year ago, he did a, a Zoom call with our team just to talk about the industry, the business side of fishing, and he sent us a bunch of things uh, from Stryker, uh, his own company, Missile Baits. He, he sent uh, some of his new magic worms that he designed with Robo Worm, an autographed Spro Little John. So just a bunch of things. And Mark Menendez is a guy, proximity-wise, is probably one of the closest pros we have that's been very generous as far as conversation with me. I've been meaning to try to get him with our team to talk about conservation because that's a big thing to Mark. But he reached out to one of his sponsors that donated some items, Precision Sonar there out of um, Benton, Kentucky area. Uh, they've been very generous to our team, and they donated some things. And then obviously you guys have great, great support for our uh, circuit with you all. Um, we received items from Spro, Trocar, Big Bite Baits, Rapala, uh, Bass Pro Shop, the AFCO, Secret Lures, uh, Bob's Machine Shop, Mustang, I mean, just on and on. And then I know Joe Moon, the way I think he knew Eli was through some product that Joe does himself, and he 
he had a bunch of just, you know, the fishing industry is kind of neat. There's a lot of people that do customization and make them for their own dates. And so um, Hunter can probably speak to it better than me. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be there that day because we had already scheduled our move-in day for Drew to, to transfer to Campbellsville. So I tried to do as much help as I could on the uh, the organization and, and just trying to get them things for that day. I spoke to Joe this morning, and he informed me that uh, they had a, a close to 70 boats, you know, which uh, is a good turnout. But the, what floored me was he said between the tournament entries the donations that were made by individuals that didn't fish and raffle tickets, they were able to raise over $10,000 for the family, which to me is just, uh, again, the fishing community just blows you away when it comes to things like that. So I just want to go ahead and throw this out, kind of be a little bit on the funny side. Uh, Drew and I have only had one experience at Patoka, and I talked to Jeremy uh, Newberry, Eli's dad, a little bit about it. In fact, one of Eli's buddies reached out to me and was like, why Patoka? And I said, well, I think they picked it because of uh, being able to have more boats. And he said, well, Eli hated Patoka. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I spoke with Jeremy, and he, he sent me a message just a day or two ago. He said he'd only fished Patoka one other time in the early spring, but he said he truly felt that they, they had a third man in the boat with him uh, that day, helping them catch the three awesome fish they had. I looked at the results, and... and for an August after August tournament day on Patoka Lake, the the, uh, the weights were very good. So it was almost like Eli was shining down on that day and made it really special. So uh, so that was kind of another neat thing that they shared with me about the tournament. But just an overwhelming uh, response from people in the industry and, and I'm sure people in his community pouring out. It's really hard in a situation like this to know what to say. And as Hunter said earlier, you want to do something to try to help the family and I think this was a great a great tribute to Eli and obviously this was his passion. For sure a lot of great work a lot of great contributions for everyone involved from the industry to the people there on the ground in Indiana helping to put this together. Mason as coach was talking there he's talking about the support from the industry and the fishing community yourself finished up your first year at Wabash just last year so you've been college fishing world here for a little bit been paying attention to it prior I'm sure what can you speak to your involvement? You know, it's it's really says a lot, I feel like, um, just from my outside perspective of all this, for an angler who still had another year to go in high school, wasn't going to be a wild bash for another year, but for the community, the industry to latch on, pay attention to, to this story that's played out, and to be able to show love for the family, um, for the industry as a whole. What, can, what have you witnessed here in the last year and what this – I mean, a brotherhood, I almost feel like, doesn't do justice for what it is. But there, there's a bond there amongst everyone involved in college fishing. And to be able to take this kid that's now since passed, but to, to know the importance of his life. And to he was almost a part of the fishing community, college fishing community, going into his senior year of high school. Talk about this bond that's created amongst incoming high school anglers into college, the coaches, the industry, and the anglers out on the college trail. Uh, yeah, there's absolutely nothing in this world uh, like the people in college fishing and that have been in college fishing and uh, people like Eli, those those who are going to be in college fishing. It's it's truly unexplainable, as you said. Uh, brotherhood really doesn't do justice to it. Um, but that all college anglers and anyone related, uh, fishermen in general, are always willing to help each other. Uh, you know, we, we pick each other up. It, it's it's a hard thing to do, and, and you got to have a support system like college fishing and, and just tournament fishing in general gives. Uh, I, it's absolutely amazing what the community did for this tournament. And uh, not only the turnout, I believe there was, there was 82, 82-ish boats, um, which is incredible, and for a Southern Indiana tournament and and. Just, just everyone that showed up to help, all, all the donors, I want, I want to personally thank all of them for what they did. Uh, ACA, thank you so much for being able to get a hold of everything that you did. You guys, you guys were huge, and uh, you just you can't say enough thank yous. Uh, I, I, myself, and Drew Fromm, another member of our team, showed up to fish the tournament, and about an hour into the day, I ended up having some really bad trolling motor issues, and 
And so we put it on the trailer and, and we thought, you know what, let's stick around, let's stick around for way and let's see what we can do to help. And, and I, I feel like it was almost meant to be all the people I got to talk to and meet, uh, friends of Eli's people who knew Eli and, and grew up around him and it, had been around as he grew up it was it was a great experience i got to help with way in and and uh it's it truly a very very special day and and a, a true testament to what the fishing community is as we wrap up here we'll talk about the plans for this tournament into the future but it's awesome to know that the memorializing of eli's life isn't going to stop with this event on august 13th it's going to carry into the future in several different ways one of those of which i've read is that um the wabash valley team is going to have a logo or patch there on their jerseys that's going to signify the significance of his life memorializing him and that's going to be present there this season carter as you're out there on the water over the next 12 months if we're starting up a new school year we're starting up a new season you're going to have that reminder there on your jersey you're going to be out there on the water and for anybody that's an angler you know for me i always talked about fishing you know just being kind of like therapy you're out there by yourself you're you're in your thoughts you're one with nature god's creation and when you're spending that time out on the water you know you don't know what thoughts are going to come through your head what's going to overwhelm you and what you should be doing into your life going into the future but you're gonna have that patch there as a reminder on your shirt you're gonna have that weight you know a little bit out there it's just like hey life's short it means a lot you know what you're doing in these moments and you don't want to forget about a brother that's since passed and there'll probably be reminders of that while you're out there on the water this year talk a little bit about you know a little the the emotions um what might you be thinking mentally as you're out there on the water having that reminder on your jersey and and the reminder of his life as a whole yeah i think having the reminder of eli on our jersey really just bring it home for us as having him out on the water with us you know out on patoka I caught a five and a half pounder, almost one big bass, about one ounce away, I think. And I've never been on that lake before. I really felt like Eli was in the boat with me uh, during that tournament. So, yeah, it's going to be an awesome year. And uh, having Eli on the jersey is definitely going to just give us a little reminder that life is short. As we wrap up here, Hunter, we'll pull you in. Talk about We'll have Coach talk about the scholarship, but I want you to speak to the plans for the tournament itself going on into the future. Like we said, this isn't something that's going to stop here right now in August of 2022. It's going to carry on and leave a legacy for both the angler and the event. Talk about the plans, what's going to happen next year, what maybe is happening on into the future to be able to carry this on and be able to contribute to the family and eventually the school as well, which we'll have Coach speak to. Yeah, so we uh, we got to talking about it actually after the weigh-in. Well, while we were doing the weigh-in, doing all of our raffle items, and Joe goes, "We're not stopping here." And we had a bunch of like puzzled looks per se, and everyone was kind of like, "What's going on?" And we're gonna keep this tournament going annually every year, and then we're gonna do the same format. So this year we did half and half. So half the money went to pay out and half the money went to the family for whatever uh, financial needs they needed. But the half that went to the family this year, they asked us to put it into a scholarship fund for the years, years coming. That way we can help some kid go to go to college and have a little bit of financial relief off that. And it's just something that we can remember him every year and something that we can just keep near and dear to our hearts. Coach, last question here as we wrap up. Talk a little bit about um, the scholarship fund that's going to derive from the tournament payout next year. And if anyone wants to contribute, talk about that as well. But talk, So two-parter here. Talk about what it means to be able to have that in his name to carry on a legacy into the future that's not going to stop in the way of the scholarship fund and also the particulars for anyone that wants to contribute or, or be a part of the scholarship, how they can do that as well. Yeah, I mean, I I just uh, shared this a little bit with some of the guys and and uh, maybe in a couple of posts even that uh, you know from from what I know of Eli, I feel like the best the way best way we can honor him is to to live each day to its fullest. You touched about you know just the privilege of being out on the water. I asked the parents when I was putting together a logo if Eli had a favorite verse and they, they said that they had found on his phone, Philippians four, six. And so I looked that up and it said, uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition. And it says with Thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
And I thought, you know, how fitting, you know, it's almost like Eli through this verse is telling us, you know, and, and probably even his parents, you know, in the days ahead that to, to not be anxious, uh, to, to submit our prayers and petitions to God. And with Thanksgiving and, and with that, you know, Kyle and, and tournament fishing, you know, it's easy to be thankful when things go your way, but it's tougher when to be thankful when things do not. And I just think the best way we can honor Eli is every day is being a gift out there on the water uh, from the Lord. We can be thankful for those moments. We're going to have a jersey with Eli's name hanging at our tent at all of our tournaments just as a reminder uh, to us as anglers and hopefully to the rest of the fishing community that it is a gift uh, that we're to be thankful for each day, um, you know, whether things have gone perfectly or not. And so I think the scholarship as well every year is just going to be another way um, to honor Eli uh, by, you know, making a donation. We've not we've not um, solidified the criteria for that yet, but I uh, was fortunate enough, I guess not fortunate, but in this situation. But uh, it was really odd, Kyle, when, uh, the week after Eli's funeral, um, I told you that my initial meeting with him was through softball. My daughter had a softball tournament in, of all places, Gulf Shores, Alabama, and I had explained to the parents that I was going to be down there, and they said, well, we're actually going to be down there possibly as well if we decide to go, and they decided to come down. Their daughter was playing in the same tournament, and of all the places, they ended up in the condo uh, directly across from our <laughs> from our door so we were able to visit with them a lot and we just uh, you know we're hopeful that this is a scholarship that we can provide for a senior graduating senior that does desire to fish in college um, we're going to try to you know iron out the rest of the details on what other criteria we want by next spring but the people that want to make donations to that they're uh, again this is set up as a 501c3 and um, they can make a paypal donation contribution through you know, uh, the the email address for that is Eli Newberry. So Eli is E-L-I. Newberry is N-E-W-B-E-R-R-Y. So it's Eli Newberry dot fishing scholarship at gmail.com. So if they go on PayPal, uh, they can use that email address and it will go, um, the contribution will go into the bank account for his fishing scholarship. And then as well, you, you know, as Hunter shared that uh, the fishing tournament is also going to make an annual contribution to that. So, so um, you know, maybe a situation if we have enough donations, we're able to honor, uh, award a scholarship to a couple students. We'll just see how things go. But uh, just so thankful for everybody that stepped up right away to help out. Uh, Miranda and Jeremy through this difficult time and just ask and encourage the fishing community to continue to pray for them. Um, I'm sure there's not a day that doesn't go by where they don't see something or, or you know, hopefully most of the things that they see are going to facilitate uh, good memories of Eli. You know, from what little I knew of him, he's a great kid. And, um, you know, when somebody is gone so soon, it's easy to to think of all the negatives, but you can also think about the blessings that he has, has given just in his personality and the person he was in the 17, 18 years that he had to be here with us. So um, so just want to say thanks again to all the community, and they can reach out if they uh, want to make a donation. They can also email me at, at wvcbass at iecc.edu, and I can try to get them in touch with the family to help out. A life taken too soon, a legacy sure to be continued and carried on. Eli Newberry, our thoughts and prayers are with his family. Great work um, by the team and the anglers there. Guys, thanks for joining us here today to talk about it. I know that it's not easy, but I thank you all for taking the time to join us. And as more information comes out about the scholarship and um, things will highlight the team throughout the season as well, I'm sure at the patch and the jersey present at the tournament. But we'll, we'll keep everyone posted as more information continues to go and carry on. And there will be another event next year, as we discussed here on the podcast today so guys again thanks for taking the time with us and we appreciate it very much thank you thank you Kyle. fishing is all about connecting with nature 
then grabbing nature by the lip and holding it up for a picture. To fishermen and other liars, the time you spent on the docks, the banks, the boats, the lines you cast, and the hooks you set. These moments you share with the people you love, the fish you never forget, and the tales that get taller with every retelling. Make memories that'll last a lifetime with Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here.